Uh, this is fascinating to watch. There's a lot of energy on the floor right now. Let's bring in Fox News chief political analyst Britt Hume, who has watched one or two of these play out. Um, Britt, it's great to have you with us. You know, we, we didn't do this during COVID, so it's been eight years since we've witnessed this, this whole process play out, um, you know, in, in the way that it has over the course of, of your career. Well, we've did, we basically had this exercise in one or both parties every four years. So you, you're right, COVID was years was an exception. Uh, I hate this story. And the reason I hate this story is that 40 years ago, uh, I got beat on this story, and it was a nightmare. And I've never forgotten it. It just seared into my consciousness. So it, look, look at it. Give us the it, details. It is thousands of journalists in pursuit of a story whose outcome we're going to find out anyway. I mean, I can think of better uses for journalists' time, but people love talking about this. People love speculating about it. Everybody wants to talk about it. And it's, it's sometimes the case that the minute the vice presidential nominee is named, He's, he or she is basically forgotten for the rest of the campaign. I'm not sure that'll be true this time, but that's the way it's been many times Tell, tell everybody who you got beat on 40 years ago. I was covering Walter Mondale. Yep. He was to choose Geraldine Ferraro. She'd come out for an audition, and there was an, always an audition press conference outside Mondale's house uh, in Minnesota. She was terrible in it. She stumbled and fumbled, and, and I thought, this this is error-averse as this campaign was. I thought there's no way they'd ever choose her. Of course, that's exactly who they did choose. It was kind of a Hail Mary pass along the lines of what came later when Sarah Palin was chosen by John McCain. Uh, but I got the story wrong, and it took me, I was 2 o'clock in the morning before I finally caught up. I hate the story. <laughs> Well, it's interesting to see Glenn Youngkin down there. Um, you know, he has a lot of support among some people. And then there's the Vance camp that really wants to see him in charge. I wonder, you know, what the experience of Saturday, how that impacted former President Trump, because if nothing else, it makes it very clear that this person is a heartbeat away right. from the presidency. And the president did indicate or the former president did indicate, you know, that that those events had some play in his mind in terms of his decision. And, and as far as I'm told, even the top of the campaign does not know his final pick. Do you believe that? Is that possible? I, I'm skeptical of that claim that his top two campaign advisors don't know, but I, he certainly has tried very hard and so far successfully to keep it from leaking out. Yeah. It must be known by now to the uh, person he's going to propose. It was striking to hear Glenn Youngkin say he hadn't spoken to the president. Right. That might be some technicality that yeah. has to do with who communicated. But well, it's my understanding that the Vance people uh, are also not 100% on where this is going There's yet. A lot so. of buzz about Vance. Yeah, a lot of absolutely buzz there Vance. is. Absolutely there is. We're going to listen in for a moment here, Britt. Thank you very much. Hang on. The procedures of this convention, Tennessee, 58 votes, President Trump. Washington, 43 delegates. Madam Secretary, Washington State, the evergreen state, yes. where the people support law enforcement by allowing them to pursue criminals, where the people support families and children by putting into law a parent's bill of rights, where the people reform taxes so that families and young people and small businesses can thrive. Washington State casts all of its 43 votes for the next president, the past president, Donald J. Trump. Pursuant to the announcement of the delegation, and the rules and procedures of this convention, Washington, 43 wow. votes, President Trump. Alabama, 50 delegates. Madam Chair, I'm Coach Senator Tommy Tuberville and proud to represent the great state of Alabama one of the most pro-military and pro-veteran states in the country. Huntsville, Alabama has sent somebody to the moon for the United States in the past. We will do it again in the very near future. We stand for the flag and kneel for God. Amen. 
Madam Chair, we proudly cast our 50 delegates for the next President of the United States, Donald J. Trump. Pursuant to the announcement of the delegation and the rules and procedures of this convention, Alabama, 50 votes, President Trump. All right, everybody. Uh, the news we have been waiting for throughout the day has just been made. This is an announcement on Truth Social by former President Trump. He has selected Ohio Senator J.D. Vance as his vice presidential pick, and this is what he writes. After lengthy deliberation and thought, and considering the tremendous talents of many others, I have decided that the person best suited to assume the position of vice president of the United States is J.D. Vance of the great state of Ohio. So, so let's talk to the, about this with our great panel that we have assembled here in Milwaukee, former House Speaker Kevin McCarthy, Dr. Ben Carson, former Secretary of Housing and Urban Development in the prior Trump administration, and he's founder and chairman of American Cornerstone Institute, and former Secretary of State and former CIA Director Mike Pompeo, also a Fox News contributor. So let's go around the horn. Um, Mr. P Mike Pompeo, good to see you. Great to be with let, you. Let's start with you. This is big breaking news. What, what are your, what's your reaction? Big news. Uh, a great pick. He'll, he'll be a fantastic vice president and is prepared to lead America if that's what's called upon. And uh, I was very confident that I didn't know who it was, but whoever it was would be better than the current vice president. And he has way uh, hit that bar. I I'm excited. I'm excited about the ticket and I'm excited about what this means for America in the years to come. Speaker Kevin McCarthy, there was a lot of buzz around Glenn Youngkin as well, um, who I know you have said you felt would be an excellent pick. What's your reaction to this choice? It's still a good choice, too. Remember, the president gets to put a team together. So it's not just the vice president. You get a team. And it's a, like in good to great, you got to get the right people on the bus. J.D. is going to really help him in Pennsylvania, especially right being that close to Ohio. J.D. picked up on, after being a Marine, he also knows the challenges when it comes to drugs. He knows what it is to rural areas get wiped out from jobs, kind of the American first policy. So I, and he brings youth to it at the same time. So it's going to be a new approach coming yeah. in. He sure does. He's 39 years old, <laughs> uh, J.D. Vance. Um, Dr. Ben Carson, welcome. Good to have you here. Thank you. You served in the last administration. Your thoughts on this pick? Uh, you served with Vice President Mike Pence. Yes. Very different pick, very different ideology, very different guy, frankly. Yes, well, I was uh, very pleased with this pick. I read uh, J.D. Vance's book. And uh, the things that he's been through gives him a very wide spectrum of the American society to deal with. And I think he'll be a very good pick. He's very articulate. He's very smart. Uh, he's young. He's energetic. And quite frankly, you know, we are so fortunate that Donald Trump survived over the weekend. Um, he will win no matter who is his vice president. But having the extra of somebody like J.D. Vance, I think, is icing on the cake. Brett, your reaction? Well, it's a t the vice presidential choice is, is an opportunity and a test. And the first test is, is this someone the American public can look at and say, now that person could be president tomorrow? Because we now have learned over the weekend just how quickly that can happen. Um, he's 39 years old. Is, uh, is J.D. Vance. He's very bright. He's dazzlingly articulate, as Dr. Carson suggested. It's not entirely clear to me that people look at him and say, now that's a president, um, which is something you need. The other thing is, of course, what does he give the president in terms of appeal to voters that the president doesn't already have? Often these choices are made to unite a party. The president doesn't have to worry about that. This party's united behind him for sure. So the question I would have is, does J.D. Vance, uh, with his sort of new uh, Republican, new conservative uh, profile, add anything uh, to voters looking around to see uh, what, what kind of a president uh, President Trump would be? I, not entirely clear to me that he does, but uh, he's got a lot of talent. He'll run rings around Kamala Harris in any debate. Yeah. Um, well, yeah, we'll look forward to that. Now we know what that's going to look like. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.